All right, so that method I just showed you right now, the big limitation of it is all of your boundaries have to be either flow boundaries or potential boundaries. And the problem we have when, when we have a, a, uh, a, a uh, flow through a dam like this, in fact, maybe I should draw a better picture of it. Maybe I can do this. Um, um, when we have, a, when, when we have a, something like that dam there, and we've got um, these boundary conditions, there's going to be some surface here that this groundwater comes down, and this, this boundary condition is not well specified. We don't know exactly where it is. Uh, and the way we used to solve these problems, we had all kinds of empirical ways to find this upper uh, phreatic surface, and we draw that upper phreatic surface in, and then we know that that's a flow line, and then once we figure that out, then we could draw the flow net. But that was all just, a, that was all just empirical stuff. So, um, but we don't have to do that anymore because what we can do right, what we can do with a finite element uh, solution is we can just tell it to find that solution. So I'm going to walk through the steps of doing a, uh, uh, a phase two uh, flow problem. Um, and this one's a little complicated, but I'll walk through the steps of doing it. Um, and it should take just about the amount of time that's left. So you're going to start your phase two problem. Um, the, the first thing you always do in a phase two problem uh, is you go to the analysis and you go to the project settings. So you're going to go to the project settings. Um, you're going to decide whether what units you wanted. In this case, I'm doing imperial units. And then you've got to go to groundwater analysis, and you've got to be sure to tell it you're doing a groundwater analysis. And there's two ways to do a groundwater analysis. Um, you want to make sure this is set to the finite element line. Don't put piezometric or anything. We want to use a finite element analysis. It'll fill in the pore fluid weight for you. And you can either do the solution just as a groundwater solution only or groundwater and stress. And the difference is that if it's groundwater and stress, it's actually going to put the body forces on it and calculate stresses and all that kind of stuff, which you can do if you're doing a consolidation equation or if you're going to do like a groundwater flow thing and then do a slope stability problem or something like that. But we're just doing flow. So we're just going to pick this as groundwater only. And then it's got these iterations and tolerances. That's, for, that's like the ones we just had on the Excel spreadsheet for how to solve it. So you're going to set that up. And then the next thing you're going to do is you're going to come around and draw your boundary. And the easiest way to draw your boundary, and you can come in with your mouse and draw your boundary. The easiest way to draw your boundary is just to get, a, get out a pencil and a piece of paper, draw it out, figure out exactly the coordinates of every node you want, and then just type in the coordinates. But that's the easiest, easiest way to do that. So, and, and you're going to do that, um, um, you do that under, uh, how do you do that? I forget how you do that. Do you start with boundaries? You know, I don't remember, but I'll give you a, I'll give you a tutorial and I'll send you guys a tutorial to do that. Then the next thing we got to do is um, we got to define our boundary conditions. So I've shown the boundary conditions here, but I got to define the boundaries. So by default, all the boundaries in in phase two are no flow boundaries unless you tell it there's something else. So right now, this problem has. No flow boundaries here, no flow boundaries here, no flow boundaries up here, um, and all around this system. But I've changed the boundaries here for some of these nodes. And so if you go to boundaries and, uh, oh, no, it's under groundwater. There we go. Groundwater, um, set boundary conditions. Um, so now I can set the boundary conditions, and there's Here's the type of boundary conditions. This is a total head boundary. This is a zero pressure boundary. This one is a nodal flow rate. So like if you know that you have a certain flow rate being pumped in, this is, let's say you got an injection well, you know the flow rate going in, you can set the flow rate. This is normal infiltration, so you put in the queue that's coming in, this, it's, a, it's another flow rate, but it goes across a line instead of at a point. Um, this is vertical infiltration. Uh, this is an unknown boundary condition, so you don't know what the boundary is there. And this final one is that there's no rebound boundary condition, remove it. That actually is not no boundary condition, that's a no flow boundary condition. So I, what I've set up, I have uh, three different boundary conditions here. At this point, I have set these up, you see these are solid. I set all these boundaries to be equal to a, a, a fixed head, and the head is 17. And then the thing conveniently draws for me a line, a, a box up there that's 17, representing a, a static head of 17. 
Down at the, at the tailwater, I've set these boundary conditions all to 14. Now this boundary condition here is set to a I don't know boundary condition, which means I don't know what kind of boundary condition there is there. So, oh no, it's actually set to a no flow boundary, but I can set it to an I don't know boundary. I think that's right. Proof. Oh, I think it was set that way. What's this one? Yeah, that was, yeah, these, all along here, these boundaries, notice they're, they're unknown. I don't know what the boundary condition is there. Because I don't know where the flow lines are going to go from here. So then the other thing you want to do is to set up your material. So I've set up a, a, a dam here that has both a clay core, has a sloping clay core, and it has a tow drain. So if I go to my uh, materials, Properties, 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 properties. Thank you. Um, so I have a, a silty sand here. Um, um, this this part is all the strength materials and stuff, so I don't really care about because I'm not doing one. This is all the strength values of it. So this is where you enter. This is the first place you go, and this is where you enter all your strength properties, unit weight, and all that stuff. But we don't really care about that because we're not doing a strength one, so I need to go back to uh, cancel. I need to go back to properties. I need to go to define the hydraulic properties. And now I've got uh, silty sand and a rock fill and a clay core. So in these ones, I'm using a, a, there's a lot of different models you can use here. I'm using a simple model, which just means K is equal, uh, that it's isotropic, and I'm, and I'm not considering um, the, the soil suction. If you come in here, you can see these things, Brooks Quarry, Fredlin and Zing, Gardner, and Van Gnuchten. Remember our soil water characteristic curves we talked about for unsaturated flow? This is where you can in, enter the unsaturated properties if you want to do that. I'm not doing it in, in, this, in, in this one. I'm just setting the K, the, the, I'm setting the K is equal to uh, 1 times 10 to the minus 7 feet per second. And I'm setting K1 is equal to K2 and there's no angle. So this is, I, this is homogeneous. If I want an anisotropic one, I could set the horizontal to a different value in the vertical, which you're going to have to do in your homework problem. So this one, K is uh, 10 to the minus 7th. In the Rockville, K is 10 to the minus 3. And in the clay core, uh, K is 10 to the minus 9th. OK? You with me? Oh, I did. I did. Yeah, that's, I did do it. You, you're quite right. I put uh, the angle is 0 so that I have the K, see the K1 angle. So I've got that the horizontal um, um, hydraulic connectivity is 4 times the vertical. Thank you. So that's how, that's how you do it. You say, OK, that's good. Then you have to mesh the thing up, which is pretty easy. Um, you can use tri uh, triangular nodes. Are really good. Triangular nodes aren't very good for stress and strain, but they're great for flow. They're easy to set up, and you don't have to worry about too much of them. You put a whole bunch of them in there, and they're easy to do. These are linear triangles. You can change the density. If you don't think that's that accurate enough, you can change the density. I'll let you play with that. And we're all done. You say, calculate. So I've got my boundary conditions. I've done my loading. Uh, and then you just say calculate, poof. Poof. And you say yes. And it does the calculation. Oh, that's it. It just did the solution. That was slow. And then you come over to this thing that looks like contour plots. And now here's my solution. Now, do those look like uh, equipotential lines? Yeah. No, but that's because I'm showing the pressure head. I don't want to show the pressure head. If I want to see equipotential lines, what do I want to display in my contour? Total head. So I'm going to go to total head. And those should, that now looks like equipotential lines. This, this uh, red line is the phreatic surface. So notice this is where my clay core is right, right in here. So the phreatic surface is really flat because I've got a very high horizontal hydraulic connectivity. And then the, the head drops way down at the phreatic surface. And it comes over and it goes into the, the tow drain here. And then notice at the tow drain that the, uh, the value is equal to the, essentially equal to the head of the tailwater because it's got a really high hydraulic connectivity. And you can do other cool things like put in uh, flow lines. You can't draw a flow net. Uh, but you can add flow lines, or you can put flow vectors in. It shows you where the flow is, and the size of the vectors is, is uh, proportional to the, the uh, velocity of the flow. And then 
I can show flow lines if I want. So I can add a flow line. I'm going to just add one at a vertex. I'm going to say, well, what's the flow line from here? And it'll calculate that flow line. And then we'll add another one. Am I still adding? I can just add flow lines in. So things have improved since you were an undergraduate and had to draw flow nets by hand. And for some of us that are really old, things have really improved. So let's just for fun go back to the this. Let me go back and change my material properties here. I think I can do them that way. Yeah. Assign material. I'm going to assign that material to silty sand, so now it's really all the mater same material. You guys with me? Mm -hmm. I'm going to redo the calculation. I should see a different calculation, right? You better see it. Whoops. I flipped back between them. I didn't do the calculate. Calculate. Poof. Poof. Done. Go back and look at my answer. Go back and look at total head. Now this is real interesting. So look what look what's happening here. What's hap what's 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 this issue right here? What's going on there? I got a wet. I got a I got a seep at my uh, my surface. Th th this is the phreatic surface, and it's intersecting the face. It drops down pretty quick around the toe drain. So if I want to fix that, I gotta change my drain because now I got I got a I got a seepage problem there. So I could put in a I could put in a chimney drain. I can increase the size of the toe drain. So I'm going to give you a couple of these really simple problems that you can just play around with and look at stuff. And we're going to look at the what happens when the, when a, when the horizontal uh, hydraulic connectivity changes. And, and once you get your, once you get your um, problem set up, it's pretty easy to, change, to play with it and see what, what happens with different stuff. So this is going to be an experiential educational thing. I'll just give you about three problems to work on. You can just open up. Uh, rock science, once you get the, when, this is uh, phase two is the name of this program, it's the final element program. Once you get this set up, you can um, um, do these kinds of runs just that fast. Okay? So, that's numerical solutions. I'm giving you back two minutes. <laughs>